Good evening, here are tonight's top stories. A Zealand woman is charged with the attempted murder of her nine-year-old daughter. The three-month-old victim of the tragic Enmore fire has been identified. A taxi driver set on fire by his ex-girlfriend has succumbed to his injuries. Police are investigating the shooting death of a sex worker on King Street. A woman is sentenced to 30 days for smuggling a SIM card in a toothpaste tube. Two brothers are dead and one hospitalized following a chopping incident at St. Lawrence, East Bank Essequibo. GCOM clarifies its authority regarding the removal of the TNM leader from the National Assembly. A security guard is charged with murder after a nightclub incident. Deputy Commissioner of Police Calvin Brutus takes leave amid financial irregularities allegations. Authorities have successfully arrested wanted persons. Stay tuned for the details of these stories. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more news. Wanted Persons Arrested At approximately 12 o'clock HRS today, Richard Arthur, also known as Aricho, and Andrew Linton, also known as Biggs, both of whom had wanted bulletins issued against them, turned themselves in at the Blairmont Police Station. The individuals were accompanied by their attorney, Mr. Edmondson, and upon arrival, they were promptly arrested and are currently in police custody. The authorities have not yet disclosed the specific charges or the nature of the investigations against Arthur and Linton. Further details regarding their cases and subsequent legal proceedings are expected to be released in due course. Three-month-old victim identified in tragic Enmore fire. Authorities have identified the victim of a devastating fire in Enmore West, East Coast Demerara, ECD, as three-month-old Leroy Archer. The fire occurred on Thursday, leading to the tragic death of the infant. According to reports, the child's mother, Chandra D. Manikchand, was in the bathroom while the child was left in the bedroom. Manikchand, devastated by the incident, reported that she was alerted about the fire in the house and immediately ran to the bedroom to rescue her child. However, the room was already engulfed in flames, forcing her to exit the building without her baby. This tragedy follows closely on the heels of another fatal fire that claimed the life of four-year-old Junior Anderson in Asia Field, Sophia. In that incident, it was reported that children playing with matches ignited a mattress, which quickly spread to other combustible materials in the home. The Guyana Fire Service as GFS reported that Junior Anderson lived with his parents, Nigel and Seanette Anderson, and his three siblings, aged 15, 11, and 6, in a one-flat wooden and concrete building. Despite the swift response from the GFS, the building and all its contents were completely destroyed. Both incidents underscore the critical need for increased fire safety awareness and precautions, particularly in homes with young children. Investigations are ongoing to determine the exact causes of both fires. Security guard charged with murder after nightclub incident. Harold Simmons, a 45-year-old security guard from Blackbush Polder, Quarantine, Burbis, was charged with the capital offense of murder on Thursday. He reportedly beat a man to death at a popular nightclub for engaging in monkey antics. Simmons appeared at the Wim Magistrate Court before Magistrate Faith McGusty. Unrepresented, he was not required to plead to the indictable charge and was remanded to prison until August 8, 2024, for a report. Simmons is accused of killing Kayim Baksh, a 34-year-old laborer from Lot 4, New Market Street, Rose Hall Town, Quarantine, Burbis, on July 7, 2024, at approximately 22.30 hours. Davika Manik, Baksha's mother, informed reporters that her son was at Shave Night Club with others, imbibing. Witnesses reported that Baksh was a making monkey antics, talking loudly, and using indecent language. Simmons, the security guard, reportedly confronted Baksh, initially cuffing and kicking him. The confrontation escalated, and Simmons allegedly struck Baksh in the head with an iron bar, leading to his death. Woman sentenced to 30 days for smuggling SIM card in toothpaste tube. 
A 55-year-old woman was sentenced to 30 days in prison on Tuesday for attempting to smuggle a subscriber identity module, SIM, card in a tube of toothpaste for her imprisoned son. The accused, Ingrid Mary Thomas, appeared at the Georgetown Magistrate's Court before Principal Magistrate Faith McGusty, where she pleaded guilty to the charge of attempting to supply prohibited articles to a prisoner. The charge stated that on Monday, at around 10.20 HRS, Thomas visited the prison headquarters located on Brick Dam, Georgetown, to deliver a carton box containing sanitary items intended for her son, Bevan Thomas. Bevan is currently serving a five-year sentence at the Mazaruni Prison for felonious wounding. During the routine inspection of the items, prison officials cut open the tube of toothpaste found in the carton box and discovered a Digicel SIM card concealed inside. Thomas was immediately informed of the offense and subsequently arrested. Ingrid Mary Thomas admitted to the offense during her court appearance and was consequently sentenced to 30 days in prison. The case highlights the ongoing challenges prison officials face in preventing the smuggling of prohibited items to inmates. Police investigating shooting death of a sex worker on King Street. Detectives in Regional Division for FUTA are probing the alleged murder of 28-year-old Sean, only no name, from Grove, East Bank Demerara. The incident occurred at around 2 o'clock HRS this morning, Thursday, July 11, 2024, at the intersection of King Street and South Road, Georgetown. Preliminary inquiries have revealed that Sean, identified as a sex worker, was standing with a 26-year-old male companion from Westlaw Penitent's housing scheme at the mentioned location. The two were standing between King Street and South Road when a heavily tinted silver Premio motor car, registration number unknown, drove south on Kroll Street. Several loud explosions, suspected to be gunshots, were heard coming from the direction of the car. Upon hearing the explosions, Sean and his companion fled east onto South Road. Unfortunately, Sean collapsed to the ground while running. The car continued north on King Street and quickly disappeared from the scene. Detectives were alerted and promptly arrived at the scene, finding Sean face down in a pool of blood. He was dressed in a black dress, a black shower cap, and black socks. Sean was pronounced dead at the scene by doctor. Harry Kassoon from the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, GPHC. Crime scene investigators processed the scene, where they discovered what appeared to be a gunshot wound under Sean's right arm. 9mm spent shells were also recovered from the location. The body of the deceased was transported to Memorial Gardens Funeral Home, where it awaits a post-mortem examination. Investigations into the incident are ongoing as police seek to uncover more details surrounding this tragic event. Zealot woman charged with attempted murder of nine-year-old daughter. Bibi Farina Joseph, also known as Christine, has been charged with the attempted murder of her nine-year-old daughter. The 33-year-old housewife from Zealot, East Bank Essequibo, EBE, appeared virtually before Magistrate Faith McGusty at the Leonora Magistrate Court on Thursday. Joseph was not required to plead to the indictable charge of attempt to commit murder and was remanded to prison until August 2, 2024. The incident reportedly occurred after a heated argument between Joseph and her boyfriend. During the argument, the boyfriend allegedly insulted Joseph and her daughter, calling them wastes and stating that he no longer wanted them. He then left the house. Following the argument, Joseph allegedly attacked her daughter with a chopper, inflicting a wound on the girl's left arm. The child managed to escape and sought help from a neighbor, who rushed her to the Leonora Cottage Hospital. A doctor examined the child and listed her condition as stable. She was later transferred to the West Demerara Regional Hospital for further medical attention. Upon arriving at the scene, investigators discovered Joseph with a chop wound on her left arm, which she claimed was self-inflicted. She was arrested and taken to the Leonora Cottage Hospital, where medical professionals confirmed her condition as stable. Following her discharge, she was placed in police custody at the Leonora Police Station. Joseph remains in custody as the investigation continues. Two brothers dead, one hospitalized following chopping incident at St. Lawrence, East Bank Essequibo. A brutal chopping incident in St. Lawrence, East Bank Essequibo, EB, on Wednesday has resulted in the deaths of two brothers and left another man hospitalized at the Leonora Cottage Hospital. 
the deceased brothers have been identified as Marvin Joseph, 17, and Ellis Joseph, 30, both from Parikov Facade, EBE. The hospitalized victim is 25-year-old minor Ryan Fredericks from Pomeroon, Essequibo Coast, Region 2. According to police reports, the incident occurred around 1500 hours HRS on Tuesday. Fredericks had just disembarked a minibus and was on his way to his aunt's house when he was attacked by the Joseph brothers, who were armed with cutlasses. Fredericks was entering his aunt's yard when the brothers, who were in a canter truck, saw him. They quickly jumped out of the truck and rushed toward Fredericks, beginning to chop him repeatedly. Fredericks managed to escape by running into his aunt's yard, but the brothers pursued him. In a desperate attempt to evade his attackers, Fredericks jumped through a glass louver's window on the lower floor of his aunt's home and collapsed inside. Meanwhile, one of the brothers, Marvin, retreated but collapsed on his way out of the yard with chop wounds to his abdomen. Ellis, the other brother, was also found bleeding from chop wounds. It remains unclear how the brothers sustained their injuries, but police suspect they may have accidentally injured each other while attempting to chop Fredericks. All three men were transported to the Leonora Cottage Hospital. Fredericks was admitted with a large chop wound on his back and multiple smaller cuts. Ellis Joseph died while receiving treatment, and Marvin Joseph was pronounced dead on arrival. The police investigation into this violent incident is ongoing. Jecum clarifies authority regarding removal of TNM leader from National Assembly. The Guyana Elections Commission, Jecum, clarified on Wednesday that it holds no authority to remove Dr. Asha Kassoun, leader of the New Movement Party, TNM, from the National Assembly. This clarification was in response to a letter published in the Stabrook News on July 10, 2024, titled, What is Asha Kassoun Still Doing in Parliament? Jikam emphasized, in light of the most recent newspaper publication, it must be categorically stated that Jikam has absolutely no authority to remove Dr. Asha Kassoun from the National Assembly. Jikam referenced Article 156 of the Constitution of Guyana, which outlines the conditions under which a member of parliament can be removed, noting that the commission plays no role in this process. Furthermore, Jikam indicated that the matter is actively being discussed at the level of the commission and the outcome will be publicized upon conclusion of the discussions. Deputy Commissioner of Police Calvin Brutus takes leave amid financial irregularities allegations. Deputy Commissioner of Police AG Calvin Brutus has opted to take annual leave with immediate effect following allegations of financial irregularities. However, Commissioner of Police Clifton Hicken has stated there is no investigation. There is no investigation going on whatsoever, Hicken asserted on the sidelines of an event Wednesday. In a statement issued on Thursday, police headquarters confirmed Brutus's request to proceed on leave to facilitate the investigation, which he deemed necessary in the interest of the Guyana police force. The annual leave was granted by Hicken. Consequent to allegations of financial impropriety leveled against Deputy Commissioner A.G. Calvin Brutus on social media and established media houses, Calvin Brutus has since requested permission to proceed on annualized vacation leave with immediate effect to facilitate an investigation in the best interest of the Guyana police force. Permission was granted by the Commissioner of Police through the prescribed procedure, police headquarters stated. This development follows the recent announcement of a rotation within the top ranks of the force, which is part of a modernization plan. Brutus, who was previously in charge of administration, was among three ranks who were rotated. Deputy Commissioner Operations AG Ravindradit Budram is now in charge of administration, and Head of Special Branch Assistant Commissioner Errol Watts is now in charge of operations. The force's announcement was a response to a social media post by an overseas-based Guyanese alleging that the police commissioner and another senior officer were sent home as part of an ongoing investigation by the Special Organized Crime Unit, SOKU. Please note that this is not true. This report is misleading and fake, Hicken clarified. During an event on Wednesday, Hicken reiterated, No it's not true and I made a release already through our system, there is no investigation going on whatsoever.